Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson I'm going to show you how to determine the names and the formulas of acids. Now in our previous lessons we've seen how to determine names and formulas for ionic compounds and molecular compounds. But acids are sort of a special category of compounds as we'll see. Now the things that makes most acids unique are that they produce H plus when you dissolve them into water. So in other words, you can think of H plus as always being the cation. So it's always going to be a hydrogen cation combined with some other anion. Now the way that we're going to indicate that it is dissolved in water is by putting parenthesis AQ parenthesis after it. And that means it's going to be aqueous. So for example, one acid, this is called hydrochloric acid. And we put an AQ after it to show it's dissolved in water. Um, another very common acid is this one, H2SO4, this is called sulfuric acid. But again, we put AQ to show that it's been dissolved in water. Now there's only three rules you have to know when it comes to naming acids. And those rules are all based off of the rules for naming anions, which we've already learned. So I'll give you a couple examples. Again, HCl. Well, HCl, so what would this acid be? Well, if the H is the H+, plus, if I remove the H+, plus, what would that leave behind? Well, that would leave behind a Cl-. minus. How do we name chlorine as an anion? Oh, well, we saw chlorine as an anion would be called chloride. Okay, so chloride is our anion. So what would the acid be? Well, we put hydro on the front and ic acid on the end. So this would be hydro on the front, chloric acid acid. Hydrochloric acid. How about another acid? HNO3. It's another famous acid. HNO3 aqueous. Okay, well if I were to imagine removing H+, plus, what would that leave behind? Well that would leave NO3. Well if I lost a positive it would leave a negative. So how do we name this polyatomic ion? Well we learned that's called nitrate. Okay, that ends in 8. Oh, if the anion ends in 8, that means the acid ends in ic acid. No hydro this time, just ic. So nitrate would go to nitric acid. Okay, so let's just go through and just try a few examples here. How about H2S? Well, H2S so this one has two hydrogen ions. So if I pulled off two H pluses, that would leave me S. And what would the charge on the S be? Well, if I lost two positives, I would leave behind two negatives. Okay, well, we learned sulfur by itself is an anion. Those end in ides, that would be sulfide. Okay, what would the name of the acid be? Well, if the anion ends in ide, the acid we put hydro on the front and ic on the end. So hydro sulf. Now the only extra thing we do with sulfur and phosphorus, instead of just saying hydrosulfic, we do put the er back in there for sulfur and call it hydrosulfuric acid. But we only do that for sulfur and for phosphorus, as we'll see. So hydrosulfuric, we put hydro on the front, ic acid on the end. How about this one? Okay, H3BO3 aqueous. Well, if I pulled off three hydrogens, so if three hydrogen ions came off, that would leave BO3, and the charge would have to be three negative. Well, how do we name this? Well, we learned this is called borate ion. Oh, eight. So I find eight. Oh, 8 says just change the ending to ic acid. So borate must have made boric acid. So ic acid. Well, how about HNO2 aqueous? Well, if we removed an H+, plus, the anion that would be left would be NO2 negative. And we learned in our lesson on polyatomic ions that NO3 negative is nitrate. This has one less oxygen, so that must be nitrite, nite. 
it. Well, it becomes us acid. So nitrite, this must be nitrous acid. Okay, how about H3PO2? Well, if I pulled off three H pluses now, that would leave me PO2 three negative. And again, in our lesson on polyatomic ions, we learned PO4 three negative was phosphate, which means PO3 three negative would be phosphite. So PO2 three negative must be hypophosphite. So same thing. We've got it going to us. So hypophosphite will become, now we don't say hypophosphus. For phosphorus, just like sulfur, we put the er back in here and we make it hypophosphorus acid. So us acid from it. Well, now let's try a few going the other way. So here's the name. What must the formula be? Well, chlorous acid. Okay, well, us acid tells me the anion ended in it, so chlorous must have come from chlorite. Well, ClO3 negative is chlorate, so chlorite must be ClO2 negative. Well, how many H plus ions would I need to balance out a ClO2 negative? Well, it's only one negative, so just one hydrogen ion, so HClO2, and we put a little aqueous here to show it's dissolved in water. How about perbromic acid? Well, ic comes from eight, so perbromic must have come from perbromate ion. Well, bromate ion is BRO3 negative. Perbromate, we add an oxygen, so BRO4 negative. Again, we've got one negative, so we need one hydrogen plus cation to balance that out, so HBrO4. And again, an aqueous to show the acids dissolved in water. How about hydroiodic acid? Well, I see hydro and ic. So hydro and ic tells me the anion ended in ide. So hydroiodic must have come from iodide. So iodide, remember, if it ends in ide, that normally just means a non-metal by itself that became an anion. So iodide probably came from iodine. If you look on your periodic table, iodine is one away from the noble gases, so it wants to be one negative. Well, how many H plus cations do I need for this? Well, just one, so it'd be HI and again aqueous. So hydroiodic acid would be HI aqueous. How about carbonic acid? Well, this one, this one is ic, but it doesn't have a hydro. So just ic must have come from just eight. So carbonic must have come from carbonate. So the carbonate ion we learned is CO3 two negative. So this now would need two hydrogen cations to balance that out. So H2CO3. And again, of course, aqueous because it's an acid dissolved in water. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on determining the names and formulas of acids. Be sure and click below so you can subscribe to our channel and be notified as soon as new videos are posted. And we will see you next time. Thank you.